other night when I was supposed to be writing a 20 page research paper on differential equations for my literary calculus class, I may have taken a short three hour break to scroll through Facebook to save myself. Anyway, I saw a five minute crafts video on how to make a rose out of your underwear. Well, anybody's underwear, I guess and knew I had to try it because no differential equation known to man can keep me from crafting when there's something better I should be doing. So I got to work. Two hours and three hot glue gun burns later, I had achieved my goal. A song by any other name would smell as sweet. <laughs> Truly, crafting can be concurrently chaotic and cathartic. So today we will first gather up the supplies as we look at the types of people who enjoy crafting. Then we will glue together a craft of our own. And finally, we will display some of the ways to market your crafts. When it comes to crafting, absolutely anyone can macro make it big. I mean, if this ADD riddled mind can manage, so can anyone. The first type of crafter you meet is the summer camp crafter. This crafty character made a tie-dye t-shirt once and considers himself an expert for life. Then we move on to the casual crafters. These people craft for hobby, to give gifts to family, or even for stress relief. Had a rough day. Try crochet. <laughs> Are the voices telling you to kill them all? Make a doll and kill it instead. Did you feel that? <laughs> Next, we move on to the professionals. These people set themselves apart by having actual talent and making things that people actually want. These people can make good money by peddling their wares at craft fairs or even online at places like Etsy or even Craigslist. Although, on Craigslist, I think that beadwork might be code for something else. <laughs> Finally, we have the most relatable and most common type of crafter. These people spend hours in the craft store picking out all the supplies for a project they saw on Pinterest for everything to end up in storage totes in their basement with no project ever completed. This cycle repeats itself until it turns into an episode of Hoarders, but with yarn. When making your own craft, not everyone has the talent or even knows where to begin. Have no fear, I will guide you through a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to make your own craft. First, you need all the necessary supplies. Lots of super glue. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. Then, you want to create a mental image for what you want your finished product to look like. Really fix it in there. <laughs> it's magnificent! So today I have chosen to make a brooch. First I'm gonna start off with a nice thick layer of this super glue. Ah uh, yeah, there we go. Then I'm just gonna stick on the supplies I have chosen. I have this beautiful googly eye. These things are always a classic. Craft! forgot the glitter. Oh well, most people consider glitter to be the herpes of the craft world anyway. I wouldn't want to create a super spreader event. Now, you may be thinking that this craft seems a little juvenile, but don't be spoolish. This was made by a professional. These things are worth hundreds of dollars. Probably. In the future. Yeah, archaeologists are gonna love these. Now, once I'm all finished, I'm gonna set it aside to dry and tidy up. When you're tidying up, you wanna make sure that everything stays neat and organized so you know where to find it next time you need it. There, neat and ready to create again soon. Oh. <laughs> now, while we wait for our brooch to dry, I'm going to tell you about some of my favorite ways to market my craft. Whenever I'm trying to sell a craft quickly to make a buck, I always turn to my van. 
park it down by the river, and try not to be mistaken for a serial killer. In the off chance that you don't own a van, which you totally should, it is a chick magnet. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah. You could always try selling at a craft fair. I don't really like craft fairs, partially because the restraining orders say I have to stay 500 yards away for most of them, but also because it's like stepping into gang territory. You have the woodworkers, the sketchy etchers, the painters, but the worst of all the rivalries is between the knitters and the quilters. Oh, you do not want to be hemmed into one of their sew downs. If your goal isn't to sell your crafts, but rather share them with the world, you could always try writing a book. Anything Martha Stewart can do, I can do better. Although, she does have me need on prison time for insider trading. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you about my personal favorite, which is my Etsy shop. Lydia's Luscious Luxuries. I have a wide assortment of crafts to choose from, from custom rocks to jewelry pieces like the one I made today, and even used socks. By myself. <laughs> I ship my pants for free to 49 US states. Screw you, Kansas. And right now, I am having a two minute sale on this very brooch. Would you like it? It's 90% off. No? Well, how about now? There. I'll give it to you for free. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. Please take it. And if you like it, could you leave me a good review on Etsy? Wow. There are so many things to cover when it comes to crafting. Today I hit some of the basics. First, we gathered up the supplies and looked at the types of people who enjoy crafting. Then we glued together a craft of our own. Finally, we displayed some of the ways to market your crafts. I'm sure that we can all agree that we would rather be crafting than focusing on our actual responsibilities, and I will happily support your craft endeavors if you follow me on Etsy. Son of a patch! I almost forgot my thesis! Truly, crafting can be concurrently chaotic and cathartic. Now, I have to go. Five Minute Crafts just uploaded a new video.